it's an Insta360 ONE X2. How's this looking? Does this look cool? It's weird, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel cool. So this guy right here is a 360 camera. It can shoot in every direction around you all at once. So if you've ever seen videos where somebody appears to be holding up an invisible selfie stick, that effect is accomplished with 360 cameras. Or if you've seen that effect where somebody is walking or riding across a tiny little globe, that's also done with these. Not necessarily an Insta360, there are other 360 cameras, but some sort of 360 camera. And these are also good for getting steady footage. So they're good at eliminating shakes and wobbles when you're moving around. Now this is a new concept for me. I've never shot with one of these before but I'm currently working on editing a different video, one about the one wheel pint, and I figure that video is a great opportunity to learn how to use this 360 camera and get some cool shots for my other video. Another cool thing about this that I'm really looking forward to is that since it's shooting in different angles all at once, you can shoot a video one time and then export it as both a vertical video for viewing on phones and horizontal video. So that's really great for like social stuff if you wanna film a video and post it on both Instagram and YouTube. You can shoot it one time, upload it vertical to Instagram and horizontal to YouTube. And that's not by doing any janky zooming in, cropping sort of stuff. You're actually reframing the video in post. So you're actually adding new data either above or on the sides of the footage. Pretty cool. Now, speaking of editing, from what I understand, that is going to be the hardest part of all this. Now this Insta360 actually comes with some sort of software slash app that does the editing, has some AI editing, does some basic popular effects, things like that. And for what I plan to use this for, I'm hoping that that's gonna be all I need because I'm really not interested in adding a whole bunch of complexity to my editing process. I really just wanna get a couple cool shots and make everything as simple as possible. So inside the box here, we have the 360 camera itself. Charging cable. This seems to be a USB-C to USB-A cable. Interesting. Looks like a little protective pouch. This, I think, is a microfiber cleaning cloth. Some instructions, some stickers, and that's it. Okay, so I've played around with this a little bit. So you turn it on, sings you the song of his people, and then there I am on the touchscreen. Hello. This is a touchscreen, by the way. So we've got 150 mode, which is basically just wide angle, but not 360, it's not shooting all around, and 360 mode. There is a little circle arrow button to switch uh, between the front and back display, but that's just switching uh, what you're seeing in the screen because when in 360 mode, it is recording with both of those cameras simultaneously. Now when I push the button to actually record, I get this message. It wants me to download the app. So that's fine. I mean, I assumed there would be an app, but I kind of don't love that you have to get an app involved just for basic functionality. Like I feel like I should be able to hit record and just record without having to set it up in an app, but whatever. So I'm opening the app and see, okay, well this time, this time it's seeing the camera. It says new device detected. When I was messing with this before, it did not give me that. So I was just flipping through the app trying to figure out how to set this thing up. I couldn't figure it out. All right, connect, confirm connection off camera. Connect the camera to Fawn E. Yes. Come on. Come on. Hey. Okay, we're activated. So now if I hit record. Is it, is it doing the thing? How do I know if it's recording? I mean, so I'm pressing, I'm pressing this button that I would assume is the record button. But, uh. You know, I don't have an SD card in it, so maybe that's the problem. I, I thought that this had at least some onboard storage, but maybe I was wrong. So here's a eight gig micro SD card. It's just one that I had lying around. Hopefully it's fast enough to actually work with this. Let's give that a shot. How do I... Oh, all right. There's a little SD card slot here behind where the battery goes. That's clicked in. It says, it says error. It's probably hard to see, but error. I'm assuming that means that my random junk drawer micro SD card is not gonna cut it for this. <sighs> so I guess I'll have to buy one with money. One look in the mirror and I'm tickled pink. I don't give a hoot about what you think. Cool. Best buy, stupid. I'm in 
rustle for a wish, pennies and dash for a kiss. And you went around looking for us, and now you're in my way. Micro Center coming in with the save. All right, if you can call spending $80 on a micro SD card a success, then that was a huge success. While I was there, I also bought a selfie stick with a thread on the end that can hook up to the bottom of this guy. What for getting it further away from me and what have you. Ow. Now I went with the 256 gigabyte memory card because that's the biggest they had. It's always very tempting to save a little bit of money and go with the smaller version, but it's never worth it. You just gotta bite the bullet. All right, you stupid camera. That's $80 worth of SD card. Hey, compatible. Oh, and by the way, there was one other development. The app, the Insta360 app that they forced you to download to just even use the most basic of the camera's functions. It's already sent me like a BS marketing type uh, notification on my phone. Now the app thing kind of rubbed me the wrong way already, but now, now that they're so quickly showing their hand that they do intend to use this for evil, well now it really chaps my ass. I realize I can take away its notification privileges in my settings, you don't have to tell me. But I shouldn't have to, all right? It's the principle, it's the principle of the thing. Huh. All right, now that we can actually use the thing, um, I'm looking at the settings, I see the options are 4K, which I understand 4K, but it's defaulting to 5.7K. And then I guess that number next to it is the frames per second, but it's got weird options. 30, 25, or 24. Who shoots 25? Uh, whatever, I guess we'll figure it out. I'm just gonna start playing around. Is that as far as that extends? Ugh. That's a lot shorter than I thought. If I had a nickel, am I right, boys? <laughs> well, she'll have to do. Preview is not supported for this mode. Well, that's really annoying. I don't get it. I was able to preview it when I wasn't recording. So why, when I'm recording, can I no longer... Oh my god, I don't want to watch the tutorial. Wow, I, it won't let me skip it. I went to go look at the video that I just took, and it's, it's forcing me to sit through this tutorial on, on how to use like the editing portion of the app. I, I'll figure it out. I don't care right now. Ugh. Watching this back, I, uh, I don't think this stick is going to work. It's got this little adjustment knob right here, focus. This little knob that sticks out just a tiny bit. But in the video, you can like really see it. See, the way this whole invisible selfie stick thing works is that basically, you know, this is using multiple cameras and, and stitching all of them together. And the stitch line is like right down the middle. So you put the camera sticking straight out like that. And then the stitch line is right down where the stick is. Apparently that's protruding too far outside of the stitch line and it's like really amplified in the footage. So that really sucks because this was 20 bucks and I don't, I don't want to return it. I, mm, well, I guess I'm just going to have to order the official Insta360 version. God dang it. Okay, so I got the InstaX official stick in the mail. It extends a lot further than that other one I had. And as you can see, it does not have a little knobby thing sticking out here. So it should be pretty much completely invisible in the camera. I don't, I don't have the app open and I can't see the display it's really far away, but I'm sure it looks a lot better. Let me just actually look. It's just such a pain to use this app. Like it's so slow. Then you finally get in there, it gives you a stupid offer for some summer sale. Oh my god, you try to close it, but it opens the stupid web page for the summer sale. And then to connect, it's like, I'm hitting wake up camera, but it's like, it's recording right now, so I don't really know why it wouldn't be woken up. And also that button's not doing anything. Wake up camera. Wake up camera. Wake up, wake up camera. Not even like an error message, it's just, it's just nothing. Like. Yeah, so far this app is by far the worst part of the experience. All right, let's try stopping the recording, then connecting to the, then connecting to the camera. Oh, come on. What? I don't. All right, there we go. Connecting, join, complete. All right, that was like a three minute ordeal just to connect the stupid. <laughs> oh yeah, but that looks a lot better though. You can't see the stick at all. So confusing. So you can't 
try to turn it on with this middle button here. That's the record button, which you would think would also turn it on. Uh, and it does, but it also starts immediately recording. So then it won't connect to the app. It apparently won't connect to the app while it's recording. On the side, there's a power button. See that guy right there? So to turn it on, you press it once. Sings the little song. But now if you press it once again, it just locks it. Press it once again, it unlocks it. Oh God, sort of, very slowly. Now to turn it all the way off, you have to hold down the power button. I don't know, I guess once you know all that, it's fine. It just doesn't seem very intuitive and it's so unresponsive. Like when I hit that lock button again, it took like a full two seconds to actually do it. I don't know, I feel like I'm being really hard on this thing. The footage looks really cool and the effects that you can get with it are really cool, but I haven't gotten to that part yet. And so I'm just talking about the, the user experience and so far, eh. But now we've got our stick, we've got our basic knowledge, and I think we're finally ready to actually go out and get some footage with this thing. So uh, yeah, let's do that. I guess we'll use this as, a, as an audio test. Uh, last time I was here, a few weeks ago, uh, this was like a big lake. I mean, not a lake, I guess, but a pond at least. And uh, I don't know where all the water went. It's weird. I guess Cardi B left town. Right, so after working with the Insta360 One X2 for a little while, how do I feel about it? Well, uh... I hate it, but I love it. You got bicycles. I have very mixed feelings about this thing. On the one hand, you can get some really cool shots out of this. The video that I put out recently where I learned to ride and review the one wheel pint, I think that video was made a lot better by the footage that I was able to get from this camera. This enabled me to get some cool like tracking shots and stuff that just would have been impossible with just myself and my regular mirrorless camera. I also love that it's so small and compact and I really love that it just shoots everything and then you can figure out all the details in post. That's awesome. Like I'm working on editing another video right now where I try out cryotherapy, where you get into a chamber that's cooled with liquid nitrogen, e you'll see. But all of that footage for that video was shot before I had this Insta360 camera. And the footage that I got while I'm actually at the cryotherapy place, it came out not great. The footage is very shaky. The camera's getting pointed all over the place, sometimes at things that are relevant, sometimes not so much. Sometimes the footage is in focus, sometimes not so much. And frankly, that comes down to the fact that I'm pretty self-conscious about filming in public. So like when the lady was talking to me, trying to explain about the benefits of cryotherapy or whatever, you know, I don't wanna be sitting there with this big mirrorless camera in front of my face, staring at the screen instead of her with this big external mic mounted on top. Like it just feels awkward, it feels rude. Plus when you're like having an experience and there's things happening and you're just running and gunning, it's hard to get perfect footage. So like if I had this guy on me, I could have just hit record and it would have shot everything that was happening in the room. And then I could have handled all of the camera movements and stuff later on in post. So that's one of the big letdowns for me is that that's the allures, that this thing is, is easy, it's quick, you pick it up, you grab it, it's small, it's low friction, you just click the button to start recording and you've got everything you need. But once it comes time to actually work with the footage that you got, all of my hopes for this being a low friction experience just just viciously assaulted by Insta360. Okay, first of all, the, the firmware and the app. 
we have to talk about the firmware and the app. They're bad. For one, the marketing strategy that Insta360 is using here and insists on forcing in your face is really annoying. For example, by default, all of the footage you take on the Insta360 will have an Insta360 watermark on it, and you have to dig through the app settings to toggle that off. The app also has a bunch of like social stuff going on in there, like they're trying to put like a, a social media platform inside of this app that's also a, a 360 video editor, that's also like a, a viewfinder and, and a file explorer for your camera, that's also like, it, there's just too much going on in that app. Like I would imagine there's a lot of different teams all working together on this app that are all spread pretty thin. And so as a result, as a single app, it works really poorly. Like it just behaves very strange and sporadically and, and unpredictably. You can tell when I'm working with the Insta360 ONE X2 because you can just stand outside the door and hear me going like, what? what? Why would, huh? I mean, my complaints in this department are too great to list, but to name a few, the app seems to always want a network connection and it complains and stops working when it doesn't have one. But the app connects to the camera with Wi-Fi. So when you're connected to the camera, you can't be connected to an internet connected network because you're connected to the camera with your Wi-Fi. So sometimes the app just poops its pants and shuts down because it's complaining that there's no network connection, but of course not, there can't be one. Sometimes out of nowhere, for no apparent reason, the camera will just refuse to stay on while I'm trying to connect to it from the app. Certain buttons just don't work. Like when you export a video, there's the share button that just does nothing. One time out of nowhere, the app told me that I needed a password to connect to the camera, even though I had never needed a password up to that point, and then I didn't put a password in and it worked anyway and it never came up again. And the camera too, like I'm gonna roll the firmware on the camera into this. Just very annoying to use and, and very weird behavior. I mean, for one, there's sporadic input lag. You saw some of that earlier where you'll just push a button and it'll just take two to three seconds to actually do it, but only sometimes. The screen is extremely small and very bad at picking up what you're trying to do. When you're digging through the settings, if you change a setting and then go back, it doesn't save the setting, it reverts back to what it was before. To actually save the setting, you have to select the new option and then tap on that new option again. Like what, what works like that? How would you figure that out besides to just be frustrated by something not changing that you already changed? You can't bulk export 360 footage from the app, meaning you have to go into each clip one by one, select it, hit export, wait for it to export, move on to the next one, hit export, wait for it to export. So at this point, maybe you're thinking, yeah, but who cares if the app is bad? Who cares if the firmware is bad? Just dump all the footage onto your computer and edit in your regular editing software, dummy. <laughs> well, first of all, it took me a long time to figure out how to even connect this thing to the computer. I had to look it up. It's got a USB-C port that you use to charge, so I just plugged a USB-C cable into that and into my MacBook, but I got nothing. It didn't recognize it. Come to find out, in order to make that happen, you gotta turn the camera on, swipe down from the top, swipe over one page, tap this little cog, go into general, tap USB mode, tap desktop mode, and then it will understand that it's connected to a computer. Annoying, but whatever. Now it's connected and I can get all of my footage off, right? <laughs> Insta360 does this adorable thing where they use a proprietary codec for all of their footage. So if you connect the camera directly to a computer, all of the files, all of the footage is going to be a .insv file. I edit in Final Cut. Final Cut has no idea what to do with that. Supposedly there's a plugin for Adobe Premiere, but I don't edit in Adobe Premiere, and from what I've read, that plugin is a little spotty anyways. There's also a Final Cut plugin, but according to the website, it only works with footage from the One R, and I have a One X2. So if I wanted to dump all of the footage off of this camera directly onto my computer so I can edit in Final Cut, what I would have to do is get this other freaking program that Insta360 has, and that program will let you convert all of the proprietary files into MP4 files, and then once they're converted, I can put it into Final Cut. And does any of that sound low friction to you? Ugh. And that, that's supposed to be the easy part. That's before I've even learned how to work with 360 footage in Final Cut. So for me, right now, that's off the table. I'm not doing it that way. So instead, I'm exporting from the app and then airdropping it from the iPad to the MacBook which works, but again, you have to do the files one by one. Now, a couple of the annoyances that I mentioned earlier before the montage, I did find that they're sort of addressed if you start digging through the camera settings, but eh, not, not really. Like for example, that issue that I was talking about where 
you have to hit the side button to turn it on. And if you hit this record button, it does turn on, but it starts instantly recording. There is a setting for that. I believe it's called quick capture and you can turn it off. But the fact that it starts instantly recording if you push that wasn't my complaint. It was that if you push that button, you then can't connect to the app because the app won't connect while it's recording. That's the annoying part. Same thing with the camera wake up thing. There's a setting called Bluetooth wake up where it'll just leave the Bluetooth chip on on the camera and then you can use the app to just automatically wake up the camera so it will connect. But I found it's not very reliable so I'm just going to leave it off because it only works half the time anyways. And the reason it wasn't connecting in that clip before was that again the camera was recording and it just refuses to connect to the app while it's recording. Also the AI effects that are built into the app, they're pretty cool when they work. You saw one of them in that montage, that little wall effect that was one of the built-in AI effects. But I also tried to do this shadow clone effect and that one didn't work at all. I don't know what happened there. I followed the instructions perfectly, but it just, it didn't work. And I, I am willing to concede that at least some of my frustrations are just learning curve. They're just from the fact that this is a, a new concept to me. I've not worked with a camera like this before and some of it's just new. But even removing that, a ton of this frustration is just from the fact that the app and the firmware are buggy and weird, at least at the time of making this video in June of 2021. So overall, man, I, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I do like the camera. The build quality on it is, is pretty good and the footage that you can get from it is, is great. I think that it could have a ton of utility, but the fact that it is so high friction to actually get the footage and start working with it and, and putting it in a video, all of that friction is, going to limit my use of this, it just is. And that's a bummer because I think these cameras have a lot of potential outside of just like specialty novelty shots, which is what a lot of people just use them for. I think it's also important to point out, it's not like this thing is super cheap. Like, like I'd be a little bit more forgiving if it were like under 300 bucks, but it's 430 bucks and it's from the leading name in this whole 360 space right now. So I think it's kind of a bummer that so much about the experience feels like it's from a cheap knockoff. But hey, that's my take on it. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. As you can probably see, depending on when you're watching this, this is a brand new YouTube channel. This is only the second video I'm putting up. So I could really use some help getting it off the ground. If you would, please leave me a comment, drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime I upload a new video. It would mean the world to me. Appreciate it. Peace. got bicycles.